Hello there. Today we're going to go ahead and configure the end user spam quarantine access. So how do we do that? There are just a few steps that we need to configure and I'm going to show you all those steps one by one. Okay, so stay tuned. And uh, before we proceed, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, leave a comment that helps a lot and it helps hack the YouTube algorithm basically. So the first thing you need to uh, do is go to network and then IP interfaces, right? So when you go to IP interfaces under network, the first thing that you need to do is you go to do you go to the interface on which you need to enable it uh, the spam quarantine access right so you go to management towards the bottom right in this section you need to make sure that spam quarantine http is enabled right uh let me just highlight the options this this and this this section should be enabled and you need to make sure the correct ports are mentioned here so this setting and this setting, right? All of this should be configured. So let me just show you. Uh, I'll use this is the default interface. I'm not gonna go for the host name. I'm gonna go for the IP address. And this is what I'm gonna go for. Um, 106.36.220, actually. Uh, colon 82, that should be fine. This is the first thing you need to do, okay? Make sure that the ports mentioned 82 and 83 are not blocked by your firewall or anything like that. That may cause further problems for any of the users who are trying to log in, right? So this is the first step. Make sure that you submit and commit the changes, okay? This needs to be done. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so... Okay, obviously, I mean, I have not submitted, so let me just go ahead and submit. Then I'll see the option of commit the changes. Commit changes right here. Click on commit changes on the top right corner. And you mentioned the reason, you should mention the reason anyways, but it's just, uh, I'm doing it in the lab, so commit changes. This is the first step that has to be there. So once you do it, right you should be able to see the spam quarantine um, login page at least to begin with right so let's check it out so i've opened a new tab and if i go ahead and type 10 to 20 colon 82 83 83 i hit enter and i should be able to see the login screen if i'm not able to see it we need to fix it but there you go I'm able to see the login screen and it is the spam quarantine as we can see at the top enter your login information below if you're unsure what to enter please contact your administrator you got to mention the username and the password and in in the next configurations we're going to make sure that the ldap is working fine and that we're able to connect to the ldap server to authenticate um, the username that the users are going to use while trying to access the spam quarantine Okay, good enough. So let's go ahead and configure the other things. Okay, we're gonna go to the system. No, let's do this. Let's go to monitor and uh, spam quarantine right there. Okay, once you're there, just click on spam quarantine. This, okay, so we'll just click on that. And if it's not enabled, you'll get an option to enable it. Anyways, now that it is done, okay, we're here. So this is the option that I'm concerned about right now, end user quarantine access, right? And you need to make sure that this is enabled, this checkbox is ticked, and then you mention LDAP here. In the drop down. you select LDAP, right? That's it. So once you've done that, once you've selected LDAP and enable the, um, basically enable the end user quarantine access first, and then select LDAP from this drop down, and then you'll uh, get the option to submit and commit the changes. Well, I've already made these changes, so I don't need to submit and commit, right? So once this step is done, you'll need to go ahead and go to system administration. Once you go to system administration, you go to LDAP, okay under system administration, LDAP, once you click on that, this is the page you're gonna land on, okay? So once you're here, you need to click on the server profile name, which is the Network Viking, 
which is right here, this one. Okay, so once you click on it, okay, so once you click on it, uh, the query that we are interested in in this case is spam quarantine and user authentication query, this one, this one, okay. Once you click on it, it's going to give you all these pieces of information. By default, this is how it's going to be. Okay. And uh, the query string, don't need to change that. Uh, the email attribute, actually, by default, is going to be proxy addresses. But I'm not using that. Okay. I'm not using that in uh, uh, for my users that I've configured in the LDAP. So therefore, I change it to mail. Now, if I just keep it as proxy addresses, you'll see there's a warning that we're going to get, right? Okay, let me just show you. Okay, so let's say I want to log in as a son. And I say the password. I did not change the email uh, attributes right now, right? So the test parameters, I'm going to go ahead and run the test. Let's see what we get. Okay, this is the result we get. We get a match positive. So we're good, right? And we get a warning as well. And what is that? Email uh, attributes, proxy addresses are not defined in the result. Oh my God. So what do we do? Go ahead and say mail. Okay, because yeah, obviously it has it, right? The user has it. So I'm going to say run test. Match positive, no warnings anymore. Okay, I'm going to show you, uh, in case you want to configure the proxy addresses, I'm going to show you where to do that in the LDAP server. But anyways, we're good for now, right? This is a proxy we're going to configure. This is the query we need to configure, and this is how you do it. Okay, so cancel. Um, I think uh, it was already on mail, right? Yeah, it was on mail. So submit and commit the changes. But I, I had already configured it, so I don't need to do it. Right. So we're done with the IP interfaces. That was the first config. We configured the spam quarantine to use LDAP. And now uh, system administration, and I configured LDAP, right? So let me just show you the users. If I go to users under system administration, there's this option of users. And you see all these users in here. A boss, a sound test operator, TNV, and admin, right? So let me just go ahead and try to log into um, the spam quarantine using the credentials from the LDAP because everything is configured, like literally there's nothing else that needs to be configured. Not only the testing is pending, I'm gonna show you the logs as well after this. Um, well, we're gonna take a uh, PCAP just to show you. And uh, yeah, uh, let me let me just show you uh, what happens when I try to log in. Okay, so we are back at the Spam Quarantine login access page, uh, the login page basically, which you can see right here at the top, right? So I'm going to say username as Zishan. You saw that I did not have this username in the users section uh, in the ESA, right? So that's why I'm using this uh, username. I'm going to show you this in the LDAP server as well. I'm going to show you where you see the proxy addresses and yeah, a couple more things possibly. But anyways, the passphrase. Okay, I'm going to give it the passphrase. And there you go. Login. Let's see. Let's hope we're able to log in. And if uh, we're able to log in, then we're good. That's it. I'm going to show you the logs and the LDAP server at the end and wrap it up with the PCAP. So I have clicked on login and let's see. And there you go. Right. So we're able to log in. And as on the right top, you can see right here, welcome XEE at TNB.com, which is XEE is short for Zishan, the username anyways. I can log out from here. Under options, we have the option to log out as well. So I'm going to do that. Anyways, so the test is successful. We're able to log into the spam quarantine. Um, we LDAP. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you the logs. So as soon as I try to uh, log in, right here, as you can see, the results. User Zishan logged out. Okay, sorry. The, when I try to log in, authentication. Okay. User Zishan with privileges unknown logged into the spam quarantine, and then I logged out. And that is actually logged as well. So you might be wondering what logs are these? I do a control C, I do the up arrow, and I see it's tail authentication, right? As I've said in my previous video as well, where I've shown you how to configure LDAP, um, you can do a tail 
these are the LDAP debug logs, basically. I've named them as LDAP. So I hit enter, and this is what I get. This is what I'm trying to connect to it. Um, if you see any problems in here, you'll be able to find more information, basically, when you're trying to connect to the, the LDAP server, but you're not able to see correct results. This is something you should check. So two um, logs that you should always check when you're trying to deal with LDAP authentication, login, blah, 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 which would be the LDAP logs and the authentication logs. Let me show you how they look, actually. So if I go to log config, you'll find that I got the authentication logs right here at number seven, right? And then I have the LDAP logs as well right here at number 28. These are the LDAP debug logs. And as you can see with the debug logs, I get a lot of information, right? Let me show you the PCAP real quick. Okay, so first things first, uh, you go to the packet capture settings, right? And this is the filter I'm using just to make sure. I can use port 3 to 6 8. As you can see in the LDAP settings, we had this port. Yes, I was using this port to connect to the LDAP server. And this is the IP address of my LDAP server. And that's it. Once I've configured this, I go ahead and run um, the capture, which is right here, start capture. I'm going to go ahead and start the capture now. Okay. So um, start capture. So click on it. Okay, so the capture is running right now. It says packet capture has started right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to log in, right? So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna try to log in again with X E E S H A N Z Sean. I'm gonna say the passphrase. Okay. Now I've mentioned the passphrase. I'm gonna say login. Hit enter. I mean I click on login and I'm able to access the spam quarantine. That's good, right? Now we're gonna see what the logs look like. Just minimize that and just stop the capture now because we are logged in. So all the processes, uh, I mean, the, uh, the request and the response would all be captured by now. So I click on stop capture, which is right here, right? So once the request is done, I go ahead and click on stop capture. I should be able to find that pack, uh, packet capture at the top, most probably uh, right here. Okay, let me just go ahead and download this file and show it to you. Why is this just 24 bytes? Uh, not sure what happened there. So let me just download the second one. Anyways, I had done it right before it. So, uh, so this is what the capture should somewhat look like. So you got... Um, the source right here, which is the IP address of your ESA right here. And then you have the destination. In this case, the first one, it, this is your LDAP server and the LDAP server responds. And then you have the twin fourth uh, communication going on, right? So if I just go ahead and click on the packet, the second one in which the LDAP server has responded, I extend or expand basically um, the searching that it's talking about. Um, I don't find anything in there. But if I go to, for example, the bind request and the bind response right here, which is packet number seven and packet number eight, right? The packet number seven, it tells you that the bind response uh, is success. And... Uh, and in the request, you should be able to find, because I'm not using any authentication, not, no proper authentication, I should be able to find um, the, uh, you know, the username and password. See, it's all open. It's all open. It's not good. It's not the, uh, the best way of doing it. Not the best way. It's not even a good way to do it because I'm just doing it in the lab. So it's completely fine, right? Um, yeah, this is how the log should look like. The binding is successful. Everything is successful. It says uh, you're good. And yeah, we're good to go with this one. Um, and just for my curious audience, who wants to know, whoever wants to know, why is it just 24 bytes when we were running the packet capture as well? Well, the reason is that uh, I had already tried to log in to my ESA using those credentials. And therefore, I did not see anything because there's something that we call as the cache, right? 
So we have the results in the cache. Now, for those of you who really want to see if that's the truth, let me just go ahead and flush the LDAP cache on, on my ESA and let me show you. LDAP flush, hit enter, and I say, yes, I want to flush the cache, flushing the cache, and it is done. Now, let me just try to log in again, and let me show you what happens. And obviously, run the capture. So start the capture. I clicked on start capture. The packet capture has started. And uh, let me see. So this is, ah, I'm logged in. I hope that does not change anything. I really hope that. But I'm 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 100% sure that is the reason we don't we didn't see anything there. 200%. Trust me. Okay, click on login. And uh, yeah, I know it for a fact that that's what happened before. So even if we don't see anything here again, it might be possibly because I was already logged in or anything, but I don't think so. But anyways, let me see. Let me just click on stop capture now because we just logged in, right? We were able to log in and yep, yeah, welcome the atnv.com. So we're able to log in. We stop the capture. We should be able to see 1K at least. Oh, 4K, see, not 1K, not just 1K. We see 4K possibly because we logged out as well while we were logged in and there were there might be other communications and yes obviously uh because we flushed the complete ldap cache so it had to complete all the operations the bind and everything so that's why we see 4k here right and for a normal um spam quarantine a login um you know uh request you'll see 1k well i saw 1k in my case so anyways it should be 1k um uh, just for login and if you're not flushed uh, the LDAP cache. 4K when you flush the, and it also depends on the amount of records and what all happens in the backhand. And as promised, for those of you who want to check it, this is my LDAP server. We go to tools, we go to Active Directory users and computers. You click on that. And once you're here, uh, the user that I was dealing with was Zishana Lee. I go to, uh, I right click on it. I go to properties. Uh, once you go to properties and uh, attribute editor right here, this is uh, the option that uh, will give you, I mean, uh, if you want to configure the proxy address and whatever, so you can do it from there. So let me just click on that proxy editor. And if you scroll down to P as in proxy editor, you'll, you should be able to see the SAM account name in here as well. Uh, the SAM account name you'll find in the packet capture as well if you analyze that. But yep. Um, sorry, yeah, proxy addresses right here as it's not configured, right? And that is the reason when you were using proxy addresses, if you use just proxy addresses instead of mail, for example, you will see a warning because it's not here, right? If you set it up, you know you won't see it, right? So you have the SAM account name as well, which you see in the PCAP as I mentioned. And yeah, all the details about this I've shared in the uh, previous video of mine. So those of you who haven't checked it, please go ahead and uh, check those videos out in my channel. So yeah, this is this is all. You can just go ahead and close it. And as I had shown you before as well, Zushan Ali is a user which I have not configured in the ESA. It's just there in my LDAP server. And that's a great advantage of having uh, integrated your ESA with the LDAP server. Anyways, uh, the point is, that i would like to thank you guys very much for watching uh, this video and if you have any uh, questions about this please do put in the comment section uh, those questions and uh, if you really like the content please share it and um, subscribe to the channel if you're new thank you so much you guys have a great day ahead goodbye